Oh, wow, good guess. Yeah, good guess. Yeah, go ahead. Welcome to our press conference with Texas. A reminder to everyone, please no video recording of press conferences and please silence your cell phones. Coach Elliott, if you would please start with an opening statement. What a battle. So much respect for San Diego, so well disciplined in the way that they play. Jen and her staff did a phenomenal job with that team and uh, there was no easy out for us. Uh, we were really challenged from a coaching staff of finding some, some good offensive weapons to try to get past it, but also trying to get the ball to the floor. And um, You know, we, game one, we just made too many errors. You know, this is a sport where if you make too many errors, you can beat yourself, and we did that in game one. Still had some opportunities we're fighting, but um, really proud of our kids for the way that they looked at each other and, and believed in one another, and different people stepped up tonight. Um, you know, I thought Logan struggled for a while early on and had other players step up and be able to do that. And then, you know, like Logan, she can come back and finish real strong and gets the final kill for us. But uh, f complete team effort. Uh, I'm really proud of them. And being at this level at this stage is not easy to get through. And uh, just really happy that we, this team gets to stick together for another two days. We'll take questions now for Coach or the student athletes. Please give your name and affiliation and name who your question is for. Danny Davis, the Austin American States of Madison. Just overall reactions to getting back to the championship match and this team being one win away from a title. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, every team is so different, so you can't really compare them. But um, just the drive and, and the grit that we have on this team is something that I've never been a part of. And um, to be able to play alongside these girls has been an absolute dream. But it's great to be back, have good memes here, obviously. And I think we can all say that we felt super comfortable um, just in practice and getting here and getting adjusted to the court. Um, and it kind of took a little bit for us to get our groove, but we ended up turning it on, and, and that was that. But super excited to be back and, and love Omaha. Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman, is this on? Okay. Uh, Madison, um, after, after you guys won over Ohio State, Asia said you're deep enough that this isn't all on Le Logan Eggleston to do it alone, and tonight was proof of that. Uh, if you could talk about the depth on the team and the experience that helped you guys get through this one. I mean, we have so many weapons, and it takes a lot of – pressure, I guess, off of us, knowing that someone can step up in any given moment and knowing that our teammates are going to step in and make a game-changing play if we need them to. And um, just I think of us getting stuck in a rotation and Melanie being able to come in, gets a kill right off the bat, has been on the bench the whole time, um, cold shoulder, but gets us out of that rotation and we end up signing out um, and got on a run. So I just, just little things like that just makes me think about it. And it's super nice to be able to have a ton of people that can do a ton of amazing things um, and just knowing we can lean on each other and you don't have to do it all by yourself. Yeah, uh, M.A. Vogel from uh, ESPN.com. Coach, um, I think this was the fifth time this season you guys have lost the first set, but you've won all five of those matches. You, you said you kind of beat yourself in that set, but can you talk about your team's resilience to even losing that first set, they, they come back? Yeah, I mean, we, the first set we were just struggling putting the ball in play. You know, with service errors and hitting errors, we just couldn't find the court. And, and you know, sometimes that happens when teams start digging early on and we didn't attack the court enough. Um, I thought game one, our blocking was not as sharp as it could be. We were a little high and we were getting tooled a lot and they were just attacking the block. And we talked to them about hand positioning being a little bit lower and tighter. And I think we really started getting some transition kills from that. Um, you know, early on in game one, they were just scoring all day long off our block. And so I thought our blockers got a little bit wider. We got in front of them and we were able to slow them down. Uh, we also, you know, changed some things from the service line because uh, furling was really hurting us. And uh, you know, changed some distance things, but I, I, I thought, you know, after after game one, they just they responded and they played extremely well and they were steady the entire match the, the rest of the way. We, uh, you know, we got stuck in a couple of rotations, but besides that, it was it was pretty smooth volleyball for us. Lee Carney, Omaha World Herald. Sage, what was the mood on the court after that first set, and what changed to kind of regroup the team? Um, I mean, obviously, everyone is disappointed when you lose a set. But at the same time, we knew that tonight was going to be a grind. We knew that we were going to have to fight every, for every single point through every single set. And we knew that we weren't 
going to be able to take our foot off the gas. So them fighting as hard as they did the first set, second, third, fourth, like they're a great team. Um, but it was just more from our point of view of taking control and taking initiative of that game and being like, OK, we're going to win this thing. How are we going to win this thing? We're going to lean on each other. We're going to trust our training. And we're going to do what we came here to do. And so I really commend San Diego for a great performance. But I think our team really came together between that first and second set and kind of just made the decision that we weren't going to let this game get away from us. And we performed really well for the rest of the game. So we did a great job. Um, Sage or Madison, at one point in that fourth set, there was about a four Longhorn pileup. I think Sage, you're involved in that, and Madison, you finished off the kill. Could either of you talk about that play and what that says about your team? Yeah, I don't even know what happened. I just saw someone else trying to go for that ball. Um, but I think it was more about our attitude of not letting that ball drop. We were down by four to start the set. Like, not a great way to start, but. We knew that we had to be gritty, and we knew that we were going to have to go for every single ball. So I knew that I was going to possibly collide with someone. And for Maddie to be ready to just get up there and swing fearlessly, like that's what you need from your outside hitter. And so she did a great job of trusting her training. She's been working really hard. And so I mean, I don't know what happened, but I'm glad we got the point. <laughs> yeah, I think I popped that one up with my hand. and. Uh everything kind of went downhill from there. But I mean, we got the point, so that's all that matters. But I think I just remember everyone screaming, get up, get up, get up, um, just because we're like, we have to keep playing. So, but it was an awesome effort on our end. Uh, Tedrick Brown with the Volleyball Project. This question is for Molly. What are you able to do to kill time for the excitement coming into these games? Are you able to sleep well, or what do you do to manage your time? Yeah, I think I speak for a lot of people on our team. We have to get a nap in. We're good at that. That's one thing we're really good at. So, uh, yeah, we do a really good job of just treating. We've been talking a lot about treating these games like any other game. Yeah, they have a lot of importance, and there's a ton of excitement around it. But um, we really just want to treat it like every other game and go out there and play Texas volleyball. So I think focusing on that and getting our pregame nap is something we focus on. Hey, Molly, um, over here. Uh, when you lose that first set, but you look around that huddle and you see all, all this championship experience, people who have been through it and been in, in matches like this, was that kind of a calming effect for you guys because there was a lot of volleyball left to be played? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that everyone can say the first set was not our perfect set, and it was not good volleyball on our end, and we lost by two points. So I think that that's also something that we know we can turn on and just rely on our training. and. It feels awesome to go out and play perfect volleyball and sweep a team, but it's an even better feeling to not play the perfect game, grind through the hard times, and beat a team in four sets like that. That's an amazing team. And to be able to turn around and just like fall back on our training, like we've been saying, I think is an even better feeling than going out and sweeping 3 up. Jarrett, what made you want to go to Melanie in that fourth set? And, and what kind of trust is there to bring her in when she has been sitting on the bench the whole match? Yeah, how about that swing to get a side out for us? It was awesome. Um, you know, Molly's a right side, and so she hits two times on the right, one time on the left. And, you know, we were, we were struggling with ball control. Uh, we were struggling getting a good swing. So we just tried to kind of solidify the ball control a bit more. And if we got an out-of-system swing, we wanted Melanie to take that swing. No offense to Molly at all. She's done a great job all night. But it's, we were just looking to get a more quality swing from a little bit, someone that's a little bit more experienced from hitting on the left when the ball's out of system. So we've done it a lot this year uh, in certain times, and she responded. Steven Munson, USA Volleyball. Uh, Madison, uh, how did training with the national team this spring help you for, to prepare you for the season and help you in this moment? I mean, it's always so fun to train with the best. And even if it's, if it's only for a week or two weeks, it's nice to be able to be surrounded by greatness. And it inspires me to come back and kind of bring some of the knowledge that I got from USA back to my team and just motivates me to work even harder. Um, I would love to be able to represent USA at some point in my career. And so it's just a great reminder just of what's, what I'm capable of accomplishing. And also just to be able to be surrounded by amazing people is just another plus. So it's been awesome. We have time for a few more questions. Yeah, Coach, um, I think this is Texas's eighth NCAA final, ninth in including the AIAW. You've been there for most of them. What is the biggest key um, for that turnaround between the semifinal and championship match, knowing you don't know who you're going to play yet, but from, from your perspective? The key to what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The, the, key, the key between the you know winning the semifinal and going to the championship match, preparing for that title match. It's another game, and it's about 
handling our emotions and handling our process in terms of understanding that. And if we make it bigger than what it is, that's when things get in trouble. So um, this, I've got a lot of trust in this group in terms of our routines. Everything that we do as a program is about routine. So we will follow the same standard that we did in the very first match of the season. They know what that is. They know what that timing is. Um, you know, we'll try to find some time right now, getting them home back to the hotel to spend some time with their family to enjoy this process a little bit. But um, I've been really impressed with their resilience and the way that they want to fight. They, they really want to earn this thing, and now they've got that chance, and uh, we're going to go for it. Uh, Jared, that kind of answered my question a little bit, but what, what's next? Do you let them go back to the hotel? Are you all going to you know, stay in the stands and watch this match? How, how do you go, go next? The, staff, the staff's going to watch it. We were going to have them watch a little bit, but with a day and a half and so much time tomorrow, you know, to family is really important to them to kind of breathe a little bit and just see that. So uh, I think the emotional side of this and families want to see their daughters when they win a big match like that, and so we'll let them go back to the hotel and just spend a little bit of quality time. We'll get the film organized for them. Um, and we'll get them organized. Take one more question down here. Oh, yeah, Molly. Um, he, he, you've gone to Bella a lot here late in the season, and she's delivered. Uh, any conversations about her taking that one off the head for a dig? I mean, I don't know that you see that every day. <laughs> yeah, hey, great cover, you know. <laughs> uh, Bella's really been stepping up. You know, she works hard every single day in the gym, and she's ready for all those moments like that. And honestly, that's just another – Thing that would happen to Bella. Like, that's just not shocking. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, guys. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly.